Hey guys, Mr. Champlin here. Today we're going to be talking about reptiles. So what are the main characteristics of reptiles? Well, they are very similar to the amphibians in the sense that they have four legs, uh, they have the two limb girdles, your shoulders, and your or your uh, pectoral girdle, and your hips or your pelvic girdle. They also have a backbone, made of bone, and a skull. So in that sense, they're very similar to the amphibians. However, they do have some differences. One of the main differences is they have dry, scaly skin. So we talked about how the amphibians have this moist skin. And they have uh, lots, of, lots of mucus glands to help keep them moist. Reptiles do not have that. Also, all reptiles have lungs. So... They, at no point in their life cycle do they have gills or, th or anything like that. They all have lungs. And most reptiles have claws. Now, this is something that the amphibians lack. Amphibians do not have claws. Another thing, and this is one of the most important um, characteristics of the reptiles, is they have an egg with protective membranes. And we'll talk about why this is so important with the reptiles. So, again, reptile skin. It is not slimy at all. It is dry and it has scales. Now, why is that important? Well, their skin is waterproof. And the reason why it's waterproof is to keep the water in, right? You don't want to dry out. Uh, many reptiles live in dry environments like deserts and places like that. Um, now, in, in order to grow, they have to shed their skin. So we, uh, you've probably seen that with a snake. Uh, my snake sheds her skin probably about every six to eight weeks. So as she gets bigger, she needs to shed that skin so that she can continue to grow. And many reptiles will grow throughout their lifetime. So here's just showing you a snake that has shedded skin. So again, you've seen this many times. Nothing new there. All right. So a little, just a little bit about the evolution of reptiles. Normally, I spend a lot of time talking about this. But in the interest of time, we're just going to mention a few important points. So... These were the first animals to be able to colonize dry habitats, right? Uh, and they were the first vertebrates to live completely on land, okay? So we know the amphibians were the first to, to be on land, but remember, the amphibians always have to go back to water to reproduce and also, you know, uh, live part of their life cycle in water, usually in their, in their larval stage. Now, for uh, reptiles, this is not true. Now, the first fossils of reptiles go back to the, to the Carboniferous period. Uh, so at the end of the Carboniferous period, th w which was sort of the age when amphibians sort of, you know, dominated the landscape, we see in the fossil record the reptiles start to um, evolve. And the reason for this is at the end of the Carboniferous period, the earth gets cooler and drier. So not too good for amphibians, but reptiles can certainly survive these types of you know conditions okay let's talk about a foreign function so first of all so reptiles are ectotherm so what does that mean so ecto means outside so unlike us they don't have as much control over their body temperature the, their bodies do not produce a lot of heat and so they have to control their body temperature by uh, using their behaviors. So in other words, if the reptile is too hot, it may go in the shade or it may dig a you know burrow. If it's too cool, it may go out and and sun itself. Uh, so if, if you've ever had a you know reptile as a pet, you know you have to have heat lamps and heat rocks and all these things, and also a cool part of the cage that the reptile can go to if it gets too hot. As far as feeding goes, most of the reptiles would be um, um, you know carnivores. Uh, and they would m eat mostly insects. So most reptiles uh, will, uh, will eat insects. Uh, of course, we have some exceptions. The iguanas, um, for example, are will only eat plants like you know lettuce and you know leaves and stuff. As do many turtles and you know tortoises. Um, snakes, of course, tend to eat rats and mice. But for the most part, most of the you know reptiles will will eat insects. Respiration. So as far as respiration goes, as we mentioned, uh, lungs. Reptiles breathe with lungs. 
Now their lungs are larger and have more surface area than the amphibians because remember the amphibians can also breathe through their skin. Their skin is highly vascularized. It's got lots of blood vessels. They can breathe um, through their skin in many cases. Reptiles don't have that option. So their lungs are bigger, more well-developed. Um, they have muscles in their ribs to expand that you know, chest cavity. If you ever like watch a lizard breathe, you can see the chest cavity really expanding and contracting like you know bellows um and if you think about uh some of the reptiles that spend a lot of time underwater like crocodiles and alligators or even um in some parts of the world there are some um there are some ig iguanas that actually spend a lot of time in the ocean. They, they dive down and eat um, seaweed. Well, what they, what they do is they have a flap of skin that prevents the water from going into their lungs when their mouth is open. So it makes sense, right? Um, you don't want to be a reptile, be underwater, and, and open your mouth to, um, to grab prey and suffocate because your lungs fill with water. Circulation. Okay, so again, uh, like the amphibians, they have this double loop system, which is much more efficient. Uh, so one loop goes to the lungs, then returns back to the lungs, and then gets pumped to the rest of the body. They so because they have a double loop system, they have two atria, uh, and they have one ventricle, which in most reptiles is partially separated. So this is kind of a half a step forward. And the amphibians, uh, they have one ventricle also, but um, the, the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood are able to mix in that ventricle. So this partially separated ventricle kind of like makes it a little bit more efficient and a little bit less mixing of the blood. But as you know uh, from, from seeing reptiles, they are not super active, right? They don't spend a lot of time running or swimming or whatever. They can often move quite rapidly for short periods of time, but then they run out of energy and need to rest. So we'll see with the birds and the mammals that the heart and the circulatory system gets even more advanced. So here, uh, again, showing you the, the so sort of three-chambered heart. So here's one atria, here's the other atria, here's the ventricle. Notice the ventricle is partially separated here. But again, you can still get some mixing of blood in the oxygenated and the deoxygenated um, blood there in the heart. So better, but not as efficient or as good as we're going to see with the birds and the mammals. As far as excretion goes, well, uh, like you and I, they have two kidneys and a urin uh, urinary bladder so um, so that they can excrete um, urine. And like we saw with a fish, or I should say with the amphibians, they have a cloaca. This is just a hole and opening where everything comes out. Now, uh, some reptiles will excrete um, their um, waste products as ammonia. Uh, or uric acid. Uh, now, the the uric acid it is very very concentrated. So uh, when they urinate, it's not like watery. It's kind of like almost like a white paste. We also see this in birds. So they're able to really concentrate their urine into this uh, kind of paste-like thing instead of a liquid, and they're able to do this because the uric acid is less to is less toxic. Now, why would they want to do this? Well, because in order to uh, sort of save water, you know, you don't want to uh, lose water. Um, so as humans, a lot of our urine is water, and we lose, and we lose a lot of water that way. Um, as you would imagine, they have larger brains than the um, and, amphibians, uh, great sense of smell, and usually good sight. Uh, they also have, um, they're able to hear a bit better than the amphibians and they have an ear bone that helps to transmit the vibrations from the eardrum to the cochlea or the inner ear so here we have it we see here you can actually see the eardrum um, like the amphibians they, um, they they don't have an external ear like we do uh, and so this would be the eardrum 
this would be the, uh, the, the bone here, and here would be the inner ear or the cochlea. Now, this may seem like a kind of um, unimportant detail, but the reason why we're, I'm mentioning it because we see with the mammals, the mammals have a much more complex structure, which evolved from this. From this. So uh, in mammals, it's more complex, but um, it did come from this very same system. As far as movement goes, um, amphibians have their legs out to the side and they move very awkwardly. Now with the reptiles, we do see some of that, some uh, with their legs you know, coming out to the side more. But then we also see many reptiles where the legs are more sort of underneath the animal. And this leads to much more efficient um, motion. And of course, we see... Um, uh, some flying reptiles, uh, of course, they've gone extinct, and some reptiles that can swim, for example, like turtles with their flippers. So I would say, as a general rule, reptiles are much better at getting around than the amphibians. Okay, reproduction. So very important. Again, as we mentioned, these were the first animals to live their complete life cycle on land. And really what made that possible is what's called the amniotic egg. So what is the amniotic egg? Well, here you see an egg, and the amniotic egg uh, refers to these special membranes that are inside the egg. So you see uh, the um, chorion is one of these membranes. The allantos, all right, is another one. So all these membranes, and, what, and what's the function? Well, the function is all these membranes help to protect the embryo, help to keep it moist, helps oxygen to go in there and helps it to remove waste products. So if you were to take amphibian eggs out of water and just place them you know, on a rock, they would simply die. But you can take um, you know, most reptile eggs and you can bury them in sand or lay them on, underneath rocks and they will be perfectly fine. Um, so we're gonna see with birds and mammals uh, some you know, changes to this, but basically they keep the same you know, they kind of just tweak this, you know, prototype. So amnia, um, amniotic eggs, very important. Allow them to come out onto land and live their entire life cycle on land. All right, very quickly, I want to talk about the, the four major groups of, you know, reptiles. Now, we're talking about the extant or the living groups of reptiles. Of course, there are many groups of reptiles, like the dinosaurs that have gone extinct. We're, to, we're going to talk about just the ones that are still around. So we have the test uh, or the um, turtles and the um, you know, tortoises. We have the squamata, which includes the snakes and the lizards. We have the tuataras and the crocodilians. So class, I should say subclass, squamata, uh, these includes the lizards and the snakes. Um, snakes are, you may, uh, you may be wondering why we put the snakes in with the lizards. Uh, why not put them in a completely separate group? They seem to be quite a bit different, but biologists think of snakes as being basically legless lizards. Now, of course, they have very long bodies and they have evolved, you know, many um, ways to sort of deal with these long, thin bodies. But essentially, it's thought that snakes evolved these bodies so they could get into burrows and eat things, but that they, but that they did evolve from lizards. So, so they put them in the same group. Here we have some lizards, of course, coming all shapes and sizes. The testudines, or these includes the you know turtle and the tortoises, and turtles uh, live in water and tortoises live on land. So that's the difference, right? They have a two-part shell, uh, so they have a shell on top here, but they also have a bony plate on the bottom, or what, what would be their sort of you know chest. The tuataras, just a brief one, I mentioned these guys, uh, kind of interesting. The tuataras are a very small group. Uh, they are thought to be very, you know, primitive group of reptiles. They're found off the coast of New Zealand. And what's interesting about them is they look like lizards, but they put them in a separate group for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons is they have a third eye on the top of their head that helps them to detect light. And the fourth and last group are the crocodilians. These would include 
things like crocodiles and alligators and the um, gavielles and the and the caimans. So these are all carnivores. They all live near water. They are all live in tropical or subtropical regions. Uh, they make nests where they lay their eggs, and many of them will guard their nests and prevent you know predators from eating their eggs. So alligators you're familiar with. Uh, you know crocodiles. Now the difference between alligators and crocodiles is alligators have a much broader snout, whereas uh, crocodiles have this kind of you know, um, you know triangular head shape. Also, when a crocodile closes its mouth, you can see many of its teeth, whereas in the case of alligators, you can see no or very few teeth. Um, some crocodiles are able to live in salt water, so they will live in places where rivers. Um, feed into, into the ocean, whereas alligators cannot live in salt water. Um, these are crocodilians that are not as familiar. Uh, this one actually lives in South America. It looks very much like an alligator, but it's quite a bit smaller, and they have this kind of greenish you know, tinge to the skin. This one here is has a, a very long um, snout, and that is to help them to catch fish. And again, when they close their mouth, you can see most of the teeth. All right, I hope this was helpful. Make sure you answer the reptile questions.